today's scripture reading comes from John's first letter from its uh, fifth chapter, verses 11 and 12. God's word tells us that, and this is the testimony. God gave, his, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. <clears throat> so my dad has this phrase that we were ingrained with as children. Whenever we would have to redo a chore or fix a mistake or just repeat anything in general, we would be reminded to dirt foot, to do it right the first time. And I think that in many, in, in some ways, many of us have had this mantra ingrained in us in some form and another in our lives. But I'm here to give you some good news today. Do it right the first time, it's false. In terms of faith in our walk with God, it's not a one-shot deal. We are given an opportunity over and over to start afresh. I want to explore today the idea of the ninth doctrine of the Salvation Army. And it reads, we believe that continuance in a state of salvation depends upon continued obedient faith in Christ. That's a pretty daunting statement. But if we break it down a little bit, it's not as overwhelming to think about. You know, there's one clear theological statement that we have to understand before we dig through this, and that's the word continuance. It's one of those dividing lines between denominations in the Christian church, and it's not my place to tell you what's right or wrong, but to simply teach what we believe in the Salvation Army. Salvation is not just a one-shot deal. It's not some magical roulette wheel of predestination. It's not possible for a man who accepted Christ as their savior at seven years old to spend the rest of his life raping and pillaging and murdering to get into heaven. It's not how it works. It's not possible for someone who has never set foot in church or established a relationship with Christ to get into heaven because they're just a good person. Salvation, our saved relationship with and through Christ, starts when we make a commitment, when we start a relationship with Jesus. And that may not be within the walls of the church, but we have to start that relationship somewhere. There's not necessarily a stopping point to salvation, but we need to think of it as something that we're always working on. For most Christians, it doesn't, it's not really a problem because as we strive to become more holy, to be more like Christ, that continued obedient faith in Christ part from our doctrine, it's evident in our everyday spiritual walk. Our scripture today mirrors this point. God gives us eternal life. That's a fact. I don't think many of us are going to argue that. But there's a but, and there's always a but. And that is we have to have that relationship with the Son. We have to have a relationship with Jesus. The scripture itself outlines it in verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So a really long and messy theological debate short, it's about our relationship with Christ. And if you really want to dig deep into this idea of continuance and all the sides of the argument, I'm more than happy to recommend some books and some Bible studies for you, and I'll sit down and hash it out with you. But I want to look more today at the idea of maintenance in our relationship with Christ and what we can do to avoid the pitfalls that sever, that distance us from our relationship with Jesus. A lot of Christians throw around the term backsliding could, and could probably even give you a list of what, what backsliding is and what it isn't, what's acceptable, what's not. But that's just too much to remember. The best definition of backsliding that I've come to understand is that it is sin that separates us from having an open, honest, and functional relationship with Christ. 
this sin, the things that are keeping us from being close to Christ, are going to vary vastly from person to person. Because sin is sin, yes, but we all sin in different ways. But regardless of this, there are similar things that we can do to combat this severing and this distancing ourselves from Christ. We have to examine our faith life regularly. 2 Corinthians 13.5 says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in, fa- in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. This is where we get back to the basics. When was the last time we prayed, read our Bibles, went to church, even our attitude towards other people? Some of these basic things are a barometer of how well we're doing in our relationship with Christ. And if we find ourselves drifting away, we have to turn back. Not, not tomorrow, immediately. Hebrews 3, 12 through 13. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The great thing that we can come to understand through looking at our ninth doctrine today is that there's no finality in our errors. Yeah, we pay the consequences of sin. That's part of life. But there's a distinction between living in a state of salvation and not. And the door is always open for us to turn back to God, to make things right as often as we need to. We come to God daily for forgiveness and for cleansing. 1 John 1, 9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And this goes together with continuing to daily seeking God with our whole heart. It's a daily thing. It's a moment by moment thing. God needs to be with us 24-7, not just in those little pockets we make just for him in our day. Stay in the word of God. Study it. Study it often. Know what God's word says. It, there's nothing new under the sun. Anything that we need to learn can be found in God's word. Anything we need advice on can be found in scripture. Proverbs 4.13. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. God's word is going to lead us in a godly way. This one gets hard sometimes, but we need to stay in fellowship with other believers. We can't make it on our own as Christians. We need the strength and the prayers of other believers. Hebrews 10.25, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some do, but encourage and warn each other especially now as the day is coming back, of his coming back again is drawing near. Mentors are important in our lives. And you know, that kind of gets to be like a formal title and, and we don't think about the people that influence us. But we have to surround ourselves with good examples, with friends, with Christian teachers that are gonna help us look at that relationship barometer and sometimes give us that kick in the pants we need to stay on the straight and narrow. Unfortunately, these people are not just going to pop up in our lives and volunteer and say, I'm going to keep you accountable. We have to find them. We have to seek them out. But they're there. And it just takes a relationship. We're to stand firm in our faith. Expect there's going to be difficult times in our Christian life. Matthew 10, All men will hate you because of me but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Life's hard. Life's messy. We have good days, but we have bad days too. There's going to be times of testing and refining our faith. Difficult times are normal, and it's okay for us to be mad at God every once in a while because you know what? He's still going to come out victorious every time. 
God didn't promise us a smooth ride or days without rain, but in each of those tests and those struggles that we face, God is with us. He's going to carry us through, and he, he is there, and all we have to do is just rely on him. And I know some days that's really easier said than done. But we persevere. One of my favorite verses, 1 Timothy 4, 15 through 17. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Don't give up. God doesn't bring us to the places in our life that we can't handle. We can't handle them as humans alone, but God can bring us through them. Now, I can say all these things, and that's all well and fine, but how do we put them to play in our life? For each of us, it's going to look a lot different, but it comes down to those basic elements of being a Christian, growing in our faith, and wanting to know Christ more and more. We develop that daily habit of spending time with God, prayer, reading scripture, and just being, just being still in the presence of God, listening to what he has for us. Memorizing Bible verses that we can share in difficult times. Listening to edifying music that's going to keep our mind and our hearts in tune with God. Developing Christian friendships so that we have people to call on when we're feeling weak. Again, there's that mentor relationship, that people that can keep us on track too. And go to church. I mean, I know it's a simple thought and it's often overlooked, but it's essential to worship, to be a functional part of the body of Christ to our growing faith. Sometimes this might seem like elementary thought, that it's kind of simple, but it's not for everybody. And I think we can admit that we've heard these ideas before. I know we've preached them before. But we need to be reminded of how important they are in order to maintain or to continue in our relationship with Christ. Life is short. I've been reminded of that fact that life can be taken from us in a split second. And then where do we stand as we face our judgment day before God? Our salvation isn't something to be overlooked or to put on the back burner for later because we don't know when our number's up. Don't get me wrong. Our life's work as Christians is not simply to be saved, but to be holy. We are to be holy as God is holy. And through that striving to be more Christ-like, every day our salvation is assured. I think of two people that were welcomed into heaven over the last decade um, in my life. The first was truly a godly woman. Major Jolly literally spent her entire life as a Salvation Army officer. She entered the training college at 17, served faithfully as an officer for 47 years, and after retiring in a very short time, within months of her retirement, her, her heart just gave up, and she came face to face with Christ. She spent her entire life just in service. Another was a 15-year-old boy, Zach, from my first appointment. He came to Christ through an invitation of a friend to come to church. And even when that friend moved away, he stayed faithful in coming to church and growing close to God. He became a soldier in the Salvation Army, and it's my belief he, he was honestly on his road to officership. I could see this is where God was taking him in his life. He made a commitment that he was going to serve God, that he wanted to be a leader in his congregation. And his life, too, ended sooner than expected. After fighting an illness for just a few days, he just didn't wake up one morning. And I, I don't give these examples to scare you, but to serve as a reminder for you and even me that tomorrow isn't promised. 
What are we going to do today? Salvation and a continuance in salvation is not just a theological battle to be caught up in. It's about relationship. It's about a relationship that needs to be established, maintained, checked, and rechecked because we don't know when our time is going to come and when our faith is going to be in question. So pray with me this morning. Father God, this is a matter that is of great importance in our hearts. Lord, our salvation, Lord, our, our pursuit of holiness are, are not only important to you, it's important to eternity. And I would just ask, God, that if there is anyone here today that has not accepted you as their Savior, or, or even it, it isn't quite sure where they stand with God, Lord, that you, you would stir in their hearts, that your Holy Spirit would surround them, that they would question their current faith and look around them and see what do I need to do to get right with God? Is it a matter of just praying the sinner's prayer? or facing up to the consequence of sin. Whatever it may be, Lord, just continue to be with us today. Move in our hearts and, and give us that Holy Spirit nudging we need on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis to live for you, to live the life of a Christian. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know that you hold the future. And I pray that you would just continue to be with us every moment of every day in full confidence. And we pray these things in your holy name today. Amen.